more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give Evangelist Jarvis Jackson a hand as he comes and blesses us all tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name, we give the Lord in that place on your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, y'all. How was y'all day, man? Y'all had a good day? Yeah. Yeah. Man, shout out to Minister yes, Ethan, I was like, Lord, I was so mid-21, but <laughs> For real. I was that sound, Bob. I had the zeal, but I don't think I was that sound. Yeah. That man of God is so sound yeah. in the word of God. Yeah. Bro, it is an honor yeah. to follow up and to minister behind you. Yeah. For real. Yeah. That's a powerful voice yes, for this generation. Yeah. Give him another hand clap. Yeah. Yeah. Look, when he went out strip, and he said something, I think it's in the book of Test the Lord. I look back at you, Terry, I said, oh, yeah, this bad guy. <laughs> oh, wait. Y'all, I'm excited, man. I really am, man, because today my spirit just been stirred up, y'all. I'm talking about just stirred up, stirred up, stirred up. I was on a prayer call this morning, right? Heard this man, this man, he said he couldn't get a kidney. And yesterday, we have this prayer call every day. So yesterday, a man of God said, man, y'all are going to experience unusual favor. And tomorrow you're going to come back and testify. So this man had been searching for a kidney all this time. Mm. To yesterday, he got the news that he got one. Right? So I'm like, oh, my spirit just beeping, right? Then somebody else came behind him. They said, I got a testimony, Pop. They said, man, we're trying to get this new house. We was in a house. It had mildew, so we wanted to get a new house. But we ain't had no money for it. He said, man, I'm at work like, dang, I just got married. I'm going to provide for my family. Say his wife texted him. And said, well, praise God, it was a, just a random check in the mail, and it was the exact amount that they needed yeah. to get this house. I'm talking about y'all been here miracles today. So you can't tell me what my God can't do. Yeah. And it's my baby girl's birthday, man. Don't knock that devil across the head, y'all. All right, man. So listen, y'all, we talking about identity, right? And one thing that I love about this church is that we do this all the time. Uh -huh. So this is not a topic study, y'all. Yeah. No. Every Sunday, yeah. Yeah. this is really the substance, the essence of every message that we hear here. Yeah. Yes, Talking about identity, y'all. So listen, let's just get into it, man. Let's just get into it. I'm going to try to contain myself. But if I don't, man, ain't nobody mad. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, y'all. Let's use this one as a little icebreaker because they was talking about identity. And I mean, the man of God just did so good. All I got to do is just bring it on home, y'all. So it says this. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Everybody say new. new. I need to make sure y'all here and not thinking about what y'all going to eat. All right. <laughs> new, right? So that's what everybody been talking about. Pop just got up here for uh, uh, expounded on it. Minister Ethan did a great job of talking about how we as believers how to understand this fact. Yeah. That when we come to God, everything is new. Again, yeah. everybody say new. Yeah. It's new. Yeah. So like Minister Ethan said, we look the same. Some of us still have the same phone number. Wow. <laughs> right? right? But everything is new about us. Right? right? Yeah. So this is where we have to get over. Get over people in the world not accepting that you're new. Uh, all right? They, they just not. They not. When Jesus was doing all these miracles, they were saying, ain't he a carpenter's son? Yeah. Ain't he from X, Y, and Z? Yeah, yeah. They didn't understand who he truly was, huh? Yeah. So we get upset at people who still, who went to middle school with us and they think we still that person from middle school. Yeah, yeah. We still the same person from high school. We still a person that was on, on the block. Yeah. That, that's all they see. But we have to know, talking about identity, that if we're in Christ, we're a new creation. All things passed away. All things became new. So you probably knew me back then. But if you don't, if you haven't met me since I've been saved, I gotta reintroduce myself. I remember I was locked up with this guy Pop. That was my dog, right? I'm talking about we was like peas in a pie. And when I got out, I was saved. I had to reintroduce myself to him. Because he was like, man, he told me. Now he said, man, when you, if we ever get in like, if we ever get in the real world, I got a job for you. Yeah. So when he seen me, he had that job. Yeah. 
he was like, man, you still want to say X, Y, Z? I said, oh, no, brother. Let me tell you what happened to me when I got out of here. I had to reintroduce myself, so we have to do that sometimes, y'all. But check this out, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I got a lot of scripture, too, y'all. like the word. Amen. Galatians 2 and 20. Look, watch how simple this is, y'all. It was so simple when I read this. I was like, light bulb, watch this. He said, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Amen. Oh, so that they kind of know the fact. Okay. <laughs> it is no longer I who live, yeah. but Christ lives in me. Yeah. 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 In the life which I now live in the flesh, yeah. I live by faith in the Son of God. Yeah. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So the first thing when we talking about identity, the first fact that we have to understand, y'all, is that we're dead. Amen. You know how to say it is? I see dead people. I see dead people. That's what I see. Everybody in here, if you're in Christ, you're dead. It is no longer us who live, y'all. But it's Christ who lives in us. Hallelujah. So watch this. I'm going to give you this point, and this should lead you down a rabbit hole when you go home. The more you learn about Christ's identity, the more you learn about your own identity. Yes. Yes. So if you want to know who am I, go study who is Christ. Because it's him who living in us. That's our identity. Romans 8 and 29, Passion Translation, y'all. It says, for he knew all about us before we were born. And he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. This means the son is the oldest amongst a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Wow. So Jesus ain't just our savior. That's our big bro. I dare you to go to prayer, because some of us, we too religious and uptight, so we go to prayer. We, dear gracious and eternal, most high, everlasting, omnipotent, all-knowing God. Y'all don't talk like that. Go to God for real. And just be like, what up, big bro? Let me talk to you today, big bro. I need to holler at you, right? Try it. You might get your prayers answered quick. I don't know. He asked about it. But it says that we are being formed. Into the image of Christ. Yes, Every day, y'all, we're becoming more and more like Christ. Amen. Amen. So, here's another point for you. Identity is found only in Christ. Amen. Don't let the world tell you that they identify as a cat. Right. <laughs> Ain't that crazy how a human trying to tell you yeah. that they're a cat? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't it crazy how a singular individual is telling you to refer to them as though they're plural? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yes, Call me them. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of you. <laughs> so what is that? That's what? Confusion. Yeah. Because again, light bulb, identity is only found in Christ, see, folks. Right. It's only found in Christ. Man, Watch this, y'all. I like fun facts. Y'all like facts? Watch this. Yes, Did you know this? If you knew it, say amen. Matter of fact, if you know it, don't tell anybody because people don't like to know it all. All right. <laughs> but did you know that as of August 26th of this year, that the LTC has received over a half a million reports of identity theft? In the first half of this year. And they say that this is on track, y'all, to surpass the entire 2023 of reports of identity theft and fraud. Wow. So that means that identity theft is at an all-time high right now, y'all. And... Pastor Vanessa talked about it when she was talking about the uh, political climate and stuff like that. This is a parallel, a parallel of what's going on in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. If it's at an all-time high in the natural, yeah. it's at an all-time high in the supernatural, y'all. This is what the enemy is trying to do. 
He wants to steal the identity of God's people. Yeah, this is where we are. This is why we're talking about that spiritual warfare standing in that vein. This is why we're going through that spiritual warfare. Because what the enemy wants you to do in this season, to make no mistake about it, he might be attacking your finances. He ain't off to that, though, for real. He might be attacking your health. He ain't really off to that, though. He wants your identity in Christ. If I can get you to leave out that trial not being, knowing who you are, I won. It don't do me no benefit if you go through the trial and still remain intact with your identity in Christ. Because all I did at this point was give you another testimony. So I just made you more dangerous. So the enemy is after your identity, y'all. Look what Romans chapter 2 and uh, chapter 12, verse 2 says. This is the easy to read translation. Some people need a little more practice with the KJV. So this is the easy to read. Watch this. It says, it says, do not become like the people who belong to this world. It says, but let God completely change the way you think, Minister Ethan, so that you live differently. That's what we've been talking about. You yeah. live different, you don't think different. Uh, nothing from nothing leads from nothing. Do the same thing, you get the same results. They say, as a matter of fact, that's the definition of insanity, right? <laughs> to do the same thing and expect different results. You're insane. Okay? <laughs> that's what it says. It says, watch this. So after he changed the way you think, that's the first thing, you live different. After you start living different, you then begin to understand what God wants you to do. Yeah. That's purpose. Yes. That's assignment. Yes. That's your mantle. Amen. You will know what is good. Amen. You know how you, you, them sins that you used to do uh -huh. before you got saved, wasn't no conviction. You get saved, try to fall back into it, conviction now. Yeah. You know what is good. Yeah. You will know what pleases God. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. You will know what is, watch this, completely right. Yeah. This is one thing I love about God. He don't leave room for doubt. He said you're going to know what's completely right. Not, I think it's right, but it might not be. You know how the world tells you living, your truth is only one truth. Yeah. It's only one truth. It's either, either completely right or it's completely wrong. It ain't our way right or wrong. But talking about identity, y'all, and how the enemy wants to take identity. This is what the, the Spirit of the Lord put in my, put in my spirit, y'all. You know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. We know them, right? Yeah. And we know, hopefully all of us do, <laughs> we know that that wasn't their real name, That's right? right? Yes. Because they were took from where they were, right. bought to a foreign land where all this idol worship went on, uh -huh. And they were given these names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? Yeah. And these new names that they were given had idol gods, means. Like one of the names meant moon god. Mm -hmm. So here they are, <laughs> servants of God, called out because they had an ability to serve these people who have captivated their people in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And now they want to change their names. So they went to change their names, and then we get to the story where we hear about they wanted them also to worship their God. And if they didn't bow down, they was getting thrown into the fire. And that's how we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood on business. They was like, you know what, Lord? I ain't bowing down. They stood up, right? Yes, they did. But we seen, though, we put a lot of emphasis on them getting thrown into the fire. But a lot of times we overlook the point that they went through a testing where the enemy was trying to change their identity. Yeah, sure yeah. Was. That's right. He wanted their identity, y'all. Yeah. This is what the world want to do. The world want to give you a name. Uh -huh. The world want to give you a belief system. Yeah. Yep. The world want to give you a standard. Yes. Uh -huh. That's true. And y'all, it's going to take us being very diligent and yes. diligent to protect our identity yes. in Christ. Yes. Because we have an enemy every day yes. that is trying to take it away from yes. us. Yes. Amen. One of the ways 
that they say you protect your identity is by upping your security. This is our security right here, the word of God. That's our hold that Bible up, Pastor Youngblood. Let them see that Bible. Keep, hold, hold it up. That's the security right here. This is how you secure yourself. You like the Lord, man. That's the Lord word. <laughs> That's your security. This is how you secure yourself. Because I'm telling you, as long as you got breath in your body, the enemy ain't stopping. Every day he's coming after this identity, y'all. Y'all remember, uh, some of some of y'all probably remember. Y'all remember when we had uh we had that conference, Prophet Hour was here, Pastor Tony Kilt was here. Y'all remember that conference, fellas? Y'all remember that conference? So when Pastor Tony Kemp was here, man, I finally called him, man. I was like, who is this guy? I didn't know who he was, but I went and found him on YouTube. I said, oh, he the real deal. He was on CNRM, Supernatural. I said, oh, snap. So when he came, I made sure I had my notebook and my pencil. I was like, man, this is God greatness right here. You know? And so one thing that he said out of a whole lot of great stuff that he said, he said he was talking about mantles and Everybody mantle in here is not the same. People have different assignments. Yeah. Identity, we all we all share the same identity. Yeah. But mantle is different. That's what you have been sent to the earth to do. Yeah. So he was talking about those mantles, right? Yeah. And one thing that he said about the mantles, one thing that helped him was, he said, find your consecration. Y'all know what, what it means to be consecrated? It means to be set apart. Set apart for the service of God. It said, find your personal consecration. When he said that, it leaped out in my spirit. And you have to do the same thing. I'm telling you, I'm releasing that nugget unto you. Find your consecration. You look at Samson. Samson had a special consecration. He couldn't do what? Cut his hair. He couldn't drink strong drinks. He couldn't be around dead bodies, right? right? Yes. But here's the thing about Samson. A lot of us, you know, when we look at this story of Samson and we think about those things, we just kind of accumulate those things or associate, or associate those things with Samson. But really it's deeper than Samson. The reason why Samson couldn't do these certain things is because he was a Nazarene. Yes, that's right. Back in those times, Nazarenes had this thing called a Nazarite vow. Yes. Amen. And this Nazarite vow, anybody who was a Nazarene, they couldn't do those same things that Samson was doing. You couldn't cut your hair. You took this Nazarite, this Nazarite vow. You couldn't be around strong drink. You, you couldn't drink strong drink. You couldn't be around dead bodies. Right? So it wasn't just Samson was just so special, but it was what Samson identified as. Y'all follow him. Yes, yeah. So because he was ordained to be a Nazarene, he had to take the Nazarite vow. That was a part of his consecration. Yeah. So when you understand what God has meant to you to do, yeah. you figure out how you ought to consecrate. Yeah, yeah. This is why we have particular schools, schools of the prophet. Because yeah, yeah. it's a certain consecration that prophets have to have. Yeah, yeah. In order to flow in that mantle. This is why we have all of these different schools. So my advice to you is to go to God and say, God, help me to find my consecration. Because watch this, y'all. You can't do what everybody else can do. And you know what I learned over the years of being saved? Is that not only can I not do what people in the world can do, but there's certain things that people in the church can do that I can't do. Because of the call that's on my life. Yeah, that's right. yes. Hey, yes. Amen. You may can do that in all freedom. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily sin. It might just be a certain activity that I just can't do. Right. Yep. Because it's a part of my consecration. Yeah, right. yeah. Amen. And the quicker you find that, so the moment you get comfortable <laughs> with just saying, nah, I can't do that. Why? I just, I, I just can't do that. Yeah. Because if you don't know that, you will have people, again, talking about identity, trying to shape you into what they think you're supposed to be. Uh -huh. yes. That's right. That's yes. right. Then we got TikTok. Uh -huh. So you might try to be like such and such on TikTok. That ain't you. Yeah. That's not your consecration. Right. Find yours so you can operate in your lane. Like we say, what we say, y'all? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Here's another fun fact. Do you know what's the most 
common victim group of people that are victims to identity fraud? Can you guess? Anybody? Christian it's Bible study. I thought it was going to be the elderly, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Kids. Kids, B. Oh. It's children. Oh, wow. Children are the number one uh, victim of identity fraud. You know why? Because they are old enough, they're people, they're alive, they have a social security number. Yeah, that makes sense. And they don't have credit history. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. So look at that in the spiritual realm, though. They have an SSI. Yep. They have a soul. No. They don't have any credit history. That's innocence. Yes. This is what the enemy is after. Uh -huh. He after the next generation. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. He want them bad. Mm -hmm. And he don't discriminate. Even Jesus, when he came into the world, the enemy made an attempt on his life. Uh -huh. So when we're talking about identity, if you know your identity, you need to make sure your kids know their identity. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Every night, what, what, what our kids pray? I am special. Yes. I am chosen. Yes. I am strong. Yes. I am unique. Yes. And I am beautiful. Yes. And yes. preach change that last word. He said, I am handsome. Give him a hand clap of praise. I need an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But you have to, this is your job. We can't put this on the church, y'all. That's That's Watch this. We can't even put it on those back there. No, no, they do an amazing job in the children's department. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that should not be the only center where your kids are drawing identity. Yes. Yes. Because think about the hour, hour and a half they're here. Out of the week, probably, let's give it four hours out of the week. <laughs> compared to how many hours they're at school. Yep. That's true. And they're around peers who don't know their identity. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So we have to make sure, y'all, that we're praying and that we're, 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 we're pouring into our children, y'all. The Holy Spirit, man, he told me the story of studying Joshua. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm in Joshua. And I read the first chapter, and there's 18 verses in that first chapter. 18, right? And four of those verses, out of four of those 18 verses in the first chapter of Joshua, go look it up. The Lord kept telling Joshua to be strong and of good cheer. He said that four times out of 18 verses. <laughs> That's over 20% yes. of the first chapter dedicated to him telling Joshua again to only be strong and courageous. I said, why is that? Because the rest of the chapter, he's telling Joshua, man, I'm about to give you this land. Y'all finna possess this land. It's finna be a war. Uh -huh. Need you to listen to me. It's finna be a war. So he had to remind them four times to just be strong and courageous. Because the end result, you're going to get the victory. I'm going to make sure you're untouchable. But I need you to be strong and courageous and get ready for this fight. Because yeah. it's going to take a fight for you to possess this land. This is what God is saying. There's an all-out war on identity right now. For your identity, for your children's identity, for your family's identity, God constantly reminded us, be strong and courageous because it's about to be a fight, y'all. It's about to be a fight. We ain't even got it to the good part of the fight yet. It's going to go down. We're talking about a war between good and evil, light and darkness. A war for souls. He said be yeah. strong and courageous because you're going to see the harvest. You, you'll see your kids walk this thing out. Yeah. You'll see family members come into the flock. But it's going to take you, somebody who already know their identity, to be okay with being on the front line, going to war until they get to this place too. Yeah. Yeah. Only strong and courageous is what God's calling us to be, y'all. Yeah. He said his pleasure ain't in none of those who draw back. He preparing us for battle. We sing the song all the time. Yeah. Your army will army dress for battle. Ah. We dress. It's yeah. time to go to war. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to go to war, y'all. Yes. Watch this. I'm almost done. I'm out the way. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. This amplified. He said, with smooth words of flattery and praise, he will turn to godliness. Those who are willing to disregard the Masonic Covenant. But the people who are spiritually mature and know their God will display strength 
and take action to resist. Mm. Another translation said they will rise up and do exploits, right? Those who know their God, it said they will display strength yeah. and take action to resist. Yes. Why do I have to resist if, if it's no war? Right. So the Bible is telling us that it's a war. Yeah. That we're going to have to display strength and we're going to have to take action to resist the world that's trying to give us an identity that's outside of what God said. Amen. We're going to have to resist it. So that means when, when the TV show is not lining up with my identity, I'm taking action to resist. When the phone don't line up, I'm taking action to resist. When I'm at my family gathering, and you know I stay too long, because you got to know when to leave. I know when to leave. That's my wife. I'll be out of there. And if you stay too long, you're going to find yourself having to take action to resist. And this is what God is saying. He said, those who are spiritually mature and know that God will know how to do this. But watch that word know. That word know is not just a word talking about knowledge. That word know is a, a word of intimacy. Yeah. It's that word that they use when they were talking about Mary and Joseph. Talking about they didn't know each other until Jesus came to pass. It's a word of intimacy. Yeah. Watch this. So to know God in an intimate way, what you got to do? Spend time with him. Yeah. 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 Light bulb. What I got to do, I got to get intimate with God. Y'all, right. listen. Let me ask you this. If you got a spouse, real quick, if you got a spouse and the only time y'all spent time together was around a group of people, is that intimate? No. 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 <laughs> That's not intimate. Intimate is a set-apart setting. Yes. Me and you. Yeah. That's what God wants. So he says, set-apart, me and you, yeah. spending time. Knowing me, getting intimate, and the more you do that, guess what's happened? You're rising up. You're becoming yeah. spiritually yeah. mature. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. rising up and displaying strength and taking action to resist. Yeah. This is the only way that you'll be able to keep your identity intact and resist the temptations of the world. Yeah. Spending personal time with God. Yeah. There is no other substitute for standing in Christ than spending time with Christ, letting God search the Lord. There's no substitute. You can't sow enough for it. Right. You can't dance enough in here for it. No. You can't raise your hands high enough in here for it. It starts at home in the secret place, y'all. Yeah. That's the only way you can stay. Amen. I heard a preacher say, if somebody's struggling during the fight, I know what you did in the secret time. I think there was apostle said it not too long ago. He said, I know that you ain't prayer. Because you faint now that it's wartime. The secret place, y'all. That word exploits means a uh, extraordinary accomplishment. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know to stand for Christ is an extraordinary accomplishment. This don't just happen, y'all. True. That's true. I wish it was easy. It really ain't. You make it to the finish line, it's because of the extraordinary power of Jesus Christ that brought you through. This is not no ordinary accomplishment. So I can't treat it like I would treat an ordinary. Some of us, we gifted. So we can just wake up and get stuff done. Me, I'm a rapper, right? So I can wait till the last five minutes and knock out somebody verse. That's a gift that I have. But this type of standing takes preparation, y'all. Last scripture, and I'm gone, y'all. First Peter 2, 9 through 10. It says, but you are a chosen generation. Somebody say, I'm chosen. Y'all, I don't believe y'all. Somebody say, I'm chosen. Okay, I believe that one a little bit. One more time, make the devil believe it now. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. Oh, they getting weak. Y'all ain't royalty. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm his special people. Come on, so since I'm all of that and that's my identity, he said, I need to proclaim the praises of him who have qualified me to be all of that. Amen. Amen. Who have took me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Yes. Watch this. I once wasn't a person of God, yes. but now I am. Hallelujah. I did attain mercy, but now I have it. Yes. Yes. So if this is how I did it, and God said, being only strong and courageous, when you go out to the world, y'all, it's time to let the lost know their identity too. Yeah. Man, you're supposed to be no dope boy. You're supposed to be over here. Yeah. Yes, amen. Man, you're supposed to be promiscuous. You're supposed to be over here. Yeah. It's our time yeah. to go out, yeah. show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness yeah. into his lawless yeah. life. Yeah. Because we was lost, but now we know our identity, y'all. Yeah. Amen. 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 amen.